10 years since September 11th, and there have been many changes. It's changed the way we travel, how the U.S. responds to emergencies, and many of the changes include our laws and how they affect communications and privacy. Joining us this morning, we're going to be talking about the legal landscape, how it's changed since 9-11. Hillsborough County uh, Assistant Attorney uh, Felix Vega is joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, April. Talking about the Patriot Act a little bit, uh, a lot of privacy concerns when we're talking about that. How does the government really justify that? It's a careful balance between our constitutional freedoms and, of course, national security. There have been a lot of inconveniences over the years, especially with travel in the United States and abroad, even getting into the courthouse. However, one of the things that the Patriot Act really focused on originally was wiretapping, domestically and also on uh, money laundering and also the money trails that the terrorists were using in order to uh, move money around the world. So now what we look at every day is, is the inconvenience worth, worth the price of the fact that we've not had another terrorist attack? You know, back in September 11th, we're about an hour and 10 years away from the first plane hitting the World Trade Center. This has not happened again, so you, it's a careful balance between the two. And you probably you'll get people on both sides. We also saw the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, now the third largest agency. Is that right? Correct. And what the Homeland Security Department did, and we have a graphic we can pull up right here, it created the Homeland Security Department with 219,000 employees. It combined 22 different agencies, including the Secret Service, the Coast Guard, and also created the TSA, which now controls all of our airports across the world. But Homeland Security in 2005 also absorbed FEMA. In the after the fiasco with Hurricane Katrina. As we've seen with all the storms that have come this year, they're also the face of domestic uh, recovery acts as well. So it's really increased the scope of Homeland Security in terms of the amount of people that are needed to carry out all these operations that go out across the country, not just responding to terrorist attacks. Yeah, we've been so lucky here in the Bay Area. We had one scare, was it 2002, I think, when right. a, a plane went into the Bank of America. But what are some of the safety concerns with the Bay Area? Well, some of the safety concerns with the Bay Area is the fact that we have several high-value targets that are in uh, the Bay Area, including, we have another graphic we can pull up, the port, the channel side, the stadiums, the malls, the airport, even the courthouses where I work here in uh, Tampa. Now, in terms of a normal Sunday, think about this. If you go to the Bucks game and the stadium's at capacity, that's 68,000 people right there. I pulled uh, some of the stats from TIA's website. 48,000 people a day go through TIA. So just on any given Sunday, upwards of 116,000 people could be in a two mile radius of the airport. And this alert came out this morning that uh, today, if you go to the Raymond James Stadium, there's gonna be enhanced pat downs uh, if you go to the Bucks game. For example, um, it used to be just from the head to the waist. Today, they're implementing a league wide change that is gonna be from the knee, knee to ankle area will be added to the current pat down as well. We wanted to get that to our viewers if they're going to the game today as well. Absolutely, real quickly, we don't have a lot of time, but if you had to pick one more law that still needs to be changed, what, what do you think? National broadband network for first responders. It's so easy. We use our smartphones every single day, and it's important that uh, first responders have the same type of technology to go into a building, be able to pull up a map. They're searching you know, room to room or be able to triage a patient transport their information to a hospital and really say, okay, who needs to go first, who needs to go second? That's the biggest thing that needs to change. It's getting tangled up in Congress a lot, and they really need to pass this law in order to protect not only first responders, but also everyone here in America. All right, very interesting. Thank you so much, as always. Felix Thanks for having me, April. Now, as we go to break, the uh, sights and sounds of that tragic day in New York City. Two planes apparently crashed into each tower of the World Trade Center this morning around 9 o'clock this morning. This is Fox News coverage event of one of the most dastardly deeds ever to happen on U.S. soil. As you can see, there is now just one of the two twin trade towers. The World Trade Center has been attacked. One of those towers has just collapsed. And one World Trade Center hit somewhere on the 67th floor. I was on the 56. And was it chaos trying to come down the steps? Yes. What was it like? Describe it. Everybody us. was on top of each other trying to come down and then somebody finally calmed the crowd down to get them to come down the stairs in an orderly fashion and get them out of the building. There was, you know, dust and whatnot everywhere, but it was... Oh The second, everyone's being asked to get down. Oh, Come down. The people are now panicking again. The second tower has just fallen. It's about 1025. 